It's nighttime in the big city. The last train from Overbrook pulls into the station. A man runs out of excuses. It's theme time radio hour with your host, Bob Dylan. It's theme time radio hour, and here we are smack dab in the middle of February. So we're going to talk about the fist-sized muscle that lies in your chest, right behind and slightly to the left of the best bone, just sitting there between your lungs. It's a remarkable organ. It works hard for you 24 hours a day. I'm talking about your heart. It pumps blood through a 60,000-mile network of blood vessels. We'll tell you just how much later on in the show. The heart is also the center of your emotions, and as such, it is the subject of many songs. We'll be talking about St. Valentine and secret love affairs as this heartfelt edition beats for the next hour. We're going to start things off with Solomon Burke. Here's the preacher, Home in My Heart. Solomon Burke with Home in Your Heart. Solomon is one of the most colorful characters in soul music. One of my favorite stories is how he once stopped his tour bus in front of a funeral parlor because nobody in his band believed that he used to be a mortician. He took all the musicians inside where the funeral parlor owner was preparing a corpse. His band couldn't believe it as Solomon took over. He embalmed the body, applied makeup, and slipped a suit on the dead man before climbing back on the bus and heading off to the next gig. Then I heard it. It might have been a hand, a clock, but no, louder and still louder. They must hear it, yet they sit and talk and talk. They must, of course they do, they know, they do. They're torturing me, watching me, letting it beat so that I, that I... Stop it! Stop it, you devils! Yes, yes, I did it! It's there, under the floor! Oh, stop it! It is the beating of his hideous heart! Here's one of the leaders of the class. Joe Strummer, and the band he had before he met up with Mick Jones. They were called the 101ers, which was the address of the squat they were living in in northwest London. Joe was heavily influenced by pub rock bands. 
until one night when he saw a band called the Sex Pistols. He knew something was up. Within a year, he was in the clash. But we shouldn't forget the 101ers because they made a couple of great records. Here's one perfectly appropriate for our Valentine's Day extravaganza. Keys to your heart. Joe Strummer and the 101ers. Young Joe Strummer with the 101ers. Keys to your heart, right here on Theme Time Radio Hour. Some of you know the story about Anthony and Cleopatra by way of Shakespeare. Well, that's just one version. History records a whole bunch of different variations. Most of them agree that Cleopatra was born in 69 BC. She was the queen of Egypt. She was amazingly well educated, spoke many languages and had an affair with Julius Caesar. After Julius Caesar was killed, Mark Anthony fell in love with Cleopatra. Their relationship was both romantic and political. Cleopatra bore him twins, but it was not her only marriage. Believe it or not, at one point, she married her own younger brother, Ptolemy the Fourteenth. Actually, there's too much story for me to tell you here, so I'll just skip to the ending. Anyway, Cleopatra fed Mark Anthony her love potions, and they say he lost his mind in Egypt. Kind of a historical roofie. Of course, she couldn't find happiness with him, and ultimately took her own life, allowing herself to be bitten by an asp. At that time in Egypt, the belief was death by snake bite guaranteed immortality. But meanwhile, what happened to Mark Anthony? Lots of different accounts. 
The one I liked best was that he was told Cleopatra had died, and he fell upon his own sword. Love will make you do crazy things. One of the greatest jazz singers who ever lived is Billie Holiday. She sang his song, and it became the title of her autobiography. Here she is, Good Morning Heartache. Good morning, heartache, you old gloomy say. Good morning, heartache, thought we said goodbye last night. I turned and tossed until it seemed you had gone. But here you are with the dawn Wish I'd forget you But you're here to stay It seems I met you When my love went away Now every day I start by saying to you Good morning, hearty, what's new? Stop haunting me now Can't shake you no how Just leave me alone I've got those Monday blues Straight through Sunday blues Good morning, hearty Here we go again Good morning, hearty You're the one who knew me well Might as well get used to you Hanging around Good morning, hearty Sit down Sunday blues Good morning, hearty Here we go again Good morning, hearty You're the one who knew me when Might as well get used to you Hanging around Good morning, hearty That was Billy Holiday, whose real name was Eleanor Fagan. Good morning, heartache. Billy wrote a book called Lady Sings the Blues, and here's a little excerpt while she's in the hospital trying to kick heroin. This time the doctors have told me with any kind of luck I should be able to stay straight for two whole years. I got enough of that Fagan Irish in me to believe that if the curtains are washed, company never comes. If you expect nothing but trouble, maybe a few happy days will turn up. If you expect happy days, look out. But no doctor can tell you anything your own bones don't know. And I can let the doctors in on something. I knew I'd really licked it one morning when I couldn't stand television anymore. When I was high and wanted to stay that way, I watched TV by the hour and loved it. Who can tell what detours I had? Another trial? Sure. Another jail? Maybe. But if you beat that habit again and kick TV... No jail on earth can worry you too much. Many of us can kick the heroin habit, but very few of us can kick that TV Jones. It's ruined the minds of many America's young people, and it's legal. Heaven's prison. Come see. Who loves you, baby? There's a lot of songs about heartbreak, and here's one of the sweetest. The Iceman, Jerry Butler. From Sunflower, Mississippi, he moved to Chicago, worked with Curtis Mayfield, was an original member of the Impressions, went off on his own, and recorded songs like this, He Will Break Your Heart.
wish I could say That was Jerry Butler, not just a nice man, but also a Chicago City alderman. Musically aware, politically aware. If you love music like we love music, how we love that lovely sound. Music makes the world go round. Love and kisses, we sing best wishes. Have a happy Valentine's. We really love you. And we're happy to say... Valentine's Day. You know, we've gotten off the beaten track a little. We're talking so much about love, we're not talking enough about the heart. Now, of course, the heart is the center of love, but it's also a very important muscle on its own. And believe it or not, a man who helped everyone's heart health was the famous ventriloquist Paul Winchell. He was having dinner with his friend Dr. Henry Heimlich, who invented the maneuver and he said to him, I have an idea for an artificial heart. Now, if a ventriloquist had said that to me, I would have thought he was crazy. Dr. Heimlich, on the contrary, supported his friend's idea. Paul Winchell finally figured out how to build it, and believe it or not, said the heart wasn't that different from building a dummy. He went to the patent office and received the first patent for the artificial heart. A very prominent medical doctor, Robert Javik, saw the patent and helped develop the artificial heart. A dentist by the name of Barney Clark volunteered to be the recipient. It's a long way from Knucklehead Smith. Who are you, broken down bunch of cheap balsa wood? Yes, balsa wood? Why you? <laughs> oh, that's another gem. Bridget, pass me the walnuts. I'm cracking them tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Here's two of my favorite fellas, Don and Phil, the Everly Brothers. His brand new heartache. A new boy came to town. I ain't seen you around. I feel the brand new heartache coming on.
Everly Brothers with Chet Atkins on the guitar here on Theme Time Radio Hour with brand new heartache recorded for the Cadence Racket label in 1958. And if you have a brand new heartache, perhaps it's acid reflux, which occurs when enzymes in stomach acid escape from the stomach and rise in the esophagus. According to current reports, as many as 14% of Americans experience heartburn weekly and 7% experience heartburn daily. Over 60 million Americans suffer from heartburn. Perhaps some of them use Nexium, Tagament, Prilosec, Rapinex, Tums, Rolades, or Mylanta. Me, I just eat sensibly. If you have a cold, cold heart, you gotta look for someone who can melt it. Here's Jenny Lewis, along with the Watson Twins, with a song on just that subject. From her solo debut, Rabbit Fair Coat, Jenny Lewis. And it's like getting a valentine from your mother. Melts your heart. Nothing is ever as good as it was. And what's good for your soul will be bad on your nerves if you reverse it. It's bound to melt your heart one way or another. It's bound to melt your heart for good or for bad. It's like a valentine from your mother. It's bound to melt your heart. Jenny Lewis and melt your heart. Some people don't want their heart to melt, and those are people who are transporting hearts for transplants, packed in ice, in a cooler. If you see one of them, let them through. They're probably in a hurry. This next song was recorded by a number of artists, including the Ink Spots. Elvis Presley said it was a big influence on him. As a matter of fact, the first time he walked into Sun Studios, this is one of the two songs he recorded. You Elvis Presley fans are probably way ahead of me and know what song I'm about to play. Elvis came back to the Sun Studios on December 4th, 1956. There was an impromptu jam session, the Million Dollar Quartet featuring Elvis, Jerry Lee Lewis, Carl Perkins, and Johnny Cash. Give a listen to Elvis in a relaxed and casual mode. The song I was telling you about is called That's When Your Heart Aches Begin. I recorded it from it and lost the do on it. Yeah. I, I, it's, it's when I come in here and I made a little record when I first started out. And that's when I recorded it. I think it says, uh, If you find your sweetheart in the 
the arms of a friend Someone could sing it right, you know, and have a guy with a real deep voice talking it off, you know, it would, it would be, I, th I think it, I think it'd sell. Elvis recorded it right after the Million Dollar Quartet Sessions, but we're going to play the version by Billy Bunn and his buddies. That's when your heartaches begin. I wish I were dreaming when you find your sweetheart in the arms of a friend that's when your heart aches begin begin heart aches begin when dreams of a was Billy Bunn and his buddies here on Theme Time Radio Hour where we're having a little heart to heart in honor of Valentine's Day. There's a little bit of confusion over which Saint Valentine the holiday celebrates. There were at least three early Christian saints by that name. One was a priest in Rome, another a bishop in Turney, and a third Saint Valentine who was almost a complete mystery. Nothing is known about him except that he died in Africa. Unbelievably, all three Valentines were said to have been martyred on February the 14th. Here's the perfect song for Valentine's Day, Secret Heart, Ron Sexsmith. Secret Heart, what are you made of? What are you so afraid of? Could it be? simple words Oh, the fear of being overheard What's wrong? Let her in on your sacred heart Secret heart Why so mysterious? Why so sacred, why so serious, maybe you're just acting tough, maybe you're just not mad enough, what's wrong, let her in on your secret heart. Very secret, your 
Ron Sexsmith, A Secret Heart. The song comes from an album produced by Mitchell Froom. One of the most famous secret love affairs was between Jeanette McDonald and Nelson Eddy. They were known as America's singing sweethearts of the 30s and 40s. They made eight box office hits for MGM. There was a big rumor that they detested each other off screen, but that was just a smoke screen. The truth was, they were secretly engaged in 1935 while they were filming their famous movie, Rosemary. Studio boss Louis B. Mayer did not approve of their union. He broke them up and their film careers and their health suffered. It's difficult to carry a secret love and the ramifications can affect your entire life. I prefer just to sing about love. Little Richard agrees with me. Here's one of his greatest songs, directly from my heart. The Quasar Rock and Roll, Little Richard.
know, it's funny. I got an email recently from a listener, and they said they've been listening to a lot of Tammy Wynette, and they thought that she sounded a lot like Little Richard. Well, I thought they were crazy. But hearing that song, I got an idea what they were talking about. Little Richard, directly from my heart. Here on Theme Time Radio Hour, your home for dreams, schemes, and themes. Slip the crimson, Timmy Dimson. Let's talk about the heart for a second. It's a muscle that works like a pump. It distributes blood throughout your body. How much blood, you ask? Well, each day, 2,000 gallons travels through 96,560 kilometers of blood vessels that branch out and cross, linking the cells of all of our organs and body parts. From Ponchatoula, Louisiana, Irma Lee was born on February 8, 1941. At 17, she married for the second time, this time to Andrew Thomas. She kept his name, even though she divorced him before she was 20 years old. As Irma Thomas, she had a number of big hits. Here's one written by Alan Toussaint under the pseudonym Naomi Neville, which was his mother's maiden name. The song that Otis Redding later adapted, and the Rolling Stones covered that version. But here's the original. Ruler of my heart, Irma Thomas. Ruler of my heart, driver of my soul, where can you be? I wait patiently. Otis redid it. He called it Pain in My Heart, and he took a writing credit. Toussaint successfully sued, and the song went back to being written by Naomi Neville. We received an email. This one's from Staff Sergeant Lisa Mayer from Altadena, California. Lisa writes, Dear Theme Time Radio Hour, I enjoyed your recent show about guns, but it left me with a question. You talk about smaller guns and a couple of the larger guns, but you seem to have left out cannons entirely. How do you fire a cannon? Well, Lisa, I'm not sure why you want to know that, that the earliest use of the cannon occurred sometime between 1300 and 1350. But I will tell you, it's harder than you think to fire a cannon. Here are some simple directions. A swab doused in a bucket of water used to thoroughly moisten the bore of the cannon. 
extinguishing any embers that might remain from a recent firing. The correct amount of gunpowder poured into a sort of shovel from a cask and emptied at the base of the bore. Then you got to ram it firmly back behind a wad or plug of wood or cloth or some such substance. Sometimes a space is left between the chards and the wad. The swad serves as a gasket to contain the gases when the charge is detonated and as a piston to push the ball out of the muzzle. The ball is then put into the bore and rammed firmly against the wad. The gunner pours gunpowder into the touch hole. When the command to fire is given, you take a slow match that's kept burning or a red hot rod and brought to the touch hole, igniting the gunpowder trail, which quickly burns down to the charge and ignites it. The burning match is held in a port fire. When the chamber pressure rises to the critical level, the charge is then detonated and the cannon discharges the ball at practically the speed of sound. Thanks for your letter, Lisa, and I think that it's only appropriate with that subject at hand to play Van Morrison straight to your heart like a cannonball. And now you know how to do it. Van the Man, straight to your heart like a cannonball, here on Theme Time Radio Hour, where we're talking about hearts. Plato once said, 
At the touch of love, everyone becomes a poet. So let's listen to a little bit of poetry written by Rudy Jackson and sung by Johnny Torrance. Hearts of stone, the jewels. Hearts made of stone. We'll never break. Cause the love you have for them. Hearts of Stone by the Jewels. Here on Theme Time Radio Hour, your home for dreams, schemes, and themes. In the mid 1800s to the early 1900s, many people sent comic valentines called penny postcards or penny dreadfuls. These cards sold for a penny and a humorous insulting verses such as, Tis all in vain, your simpering looks. You never can incline with all your bustles, stays in curls to find a valentine. It seems like it's worth about a penny. The Franklin family was very talented. The father, Reverend C.L. Franklin, was a noted figure in the black community of the 50s and 60s and one of the first ministers to host his own national radio show. He had three daughters who sang. The most famous was Aretha. I think you all know her. There was also Carolyn Franklin, but the one we're going to talk about today is named Irma. She was born on March 13th, 1938, in Shelby, Mississippi. She sang with Aretha and Carolyn in church choir. In high school, she performed with a vocal group called the Cleopatrets. What a great name. She's probably best remembered for this song she recorded with Burt Burns for his Shout record label in 1967. I think you might know it, but you might not know the original. Here it is, Irma Franklin, Peace of My Heart. Didn't I make you feel like you were the only man? Didn't I give you everything that a woman possibly can?
That was Aretha's little sister, Irma, with a song written by Burt Burns and Jerry Magavoy. The record was a top 10 R&B hit for Irma, but before she could record the album that that single would be a part of, Burt Burns died suddenly. Irma's career never recovered, but the song became better known when Janis Joplin took it to number 12 on the pop charts. Yardbird is slang for chicken, as in poultry, not like coward. It was the nickname of the legendary jazz saxophone player Charlie Parker. It was also the name of a band from England that had three famous guitarists, Eric Clapton, Jeff Beck, and Jimmy Page. Eric left after a song For Your Love because it violated his blues purist sensibility. Jeff Beck stepped into his shoes, and he had a number of hits, including this one, Heart Full of Soul. Here are the yard birds, or as I call them, the chickens. That was the Eye Birds with Heart Full of Soul on our Valentine's Day Heart Show. We got time for one final song, and we're going to end alphabetically. Zing with the strings of my heart. Supposedly, Judy Garland sang that song at her MGM audition. She later sang it in the 1938 film Listen, Darling, and made it a part of her live show for the rest of her career. <laughs> From 1958, these are the coasters. Zing with the strings of my heart. This version of that song features a vocal by bass singer Doug Jones. Dear, when you smile at me, I heard a melody. It haunted me from the start. Inside of me Started a symphony Sing when the string Of my heart What was like a breath of spring I heard a robin sing About a lesson Upon Go! 
flowers on Valentine's Day and over a billion dollars worth of chocolate. So I better get the heck out of here and pick some up before I get myself in trouble. Happy Valentine's Day. We'll see you next week with all new dreams, themes, and schemes right here on Theme Time Radio Hour. See you then. You've been listening to Theme Time Radio Hour with your host, Bob Dylan. Produced by Eddie Gorodetsky. Associate producer, Sonny Webster. Continuity by Eats Martin. Edited by Damian Rodriguez. Supervising editor, Rob McCumber. The Theme Time Research Team, Diane Lapson and Bernie Bernstein. With additional research by Lynn Sheridan, Kimberly Williams, and Robert Bauer. Production assistance by Jim McBean. Special thanks to Randy Azradi, Debbie Sweeney, Coco Shunya, and Samson's Diner. For XM Radio, Lee Abrams. Recorded in Studio B, the Abernathy Building. Studio engineer, Tex Carbo. This has been a Grey Water Park production in association with Big Red Tree. This is your announcer, Pierre Mancini, speaking. Join us again next week for Theme Time Radio Hour when the subject is shoes. <laughs>